file. This is the, a, an example of what a red file looks like when you shoot it with the camera. You get a bunch of R3D files. And so what kind of metadata can we get just with a file structure, with the, excuse me, the name? What can we get from that, right? The A is uh, the camera ID. And frankly, I think this is really the only thing that you can, on a camera, can change. You can decide if you want you, how you uh, name your camera. So you have two cameras shooting at the same time. You'd have an A and a B camera would make sense. Start and stops of uh, the camera. The creation date. And uh, if it's a span file, the two gig file size limit. So if the file goes up, if it, it'll be, you know, a, this, this number will increase. And of course, the file type. That's what you can get right from the, right from the, just the file name. We can get all that metadata just from the file name itself. We can bring that into the Avid. We can track all of that. To get further, file, further metadata, ultimately the, the way to think about this is we need an ALE. We need an Avid Log Exchange file. And there's a number of ways to get those into the Avid. We're working on some ways. Um, but you get an XML from, uh, from Red Cine, uh, and a, an ALE from uh, MetaCheater, and then there's Redline, which is in development, which will give us an ALE. But ultimately, when we're working, it's got to be an ALE. So whatever you're thinking about, we want an ALE. When you get that ALE, this is pretty standard um, VFX workflow right now, is that you'd get that ALE, you bring it in, and then you'd batch import the QuickTime file, and that would merge the metadata to that QuickTime file. So you'd have a, you just have a, you know, it could be a, a DPX files, whatever it is that you batch import, and it pulls it in, turns it into a, uh, uh, it, it merges the metadata, and then we'll track it from that point forward. So we talk about Red Alerts, Mac OS X only. Um, it actually can export uh, QuickTime reference files. And uh, this is a, what I'm talking about is really a proxy workflow. You can do a high, you know, um, like an offline online workflow with this, but for the most part, you would use Avid as, as, your edit, as your offline editor and then finish on scratch. That's sort of the workflow we're talking about. So it comes as high, medium proxies and full. Um, the first workflow is to export out of Red Cine and then do a, a with QuickTime Pro or some other application, save as, you know, export as uh, an Avid DNX HD file. So we'd recommend using Avid DNX 36. It's a fantastic offline HD Kodak. Uh, it saves huge amounts of dry space. It's a true HD frame rate, your true HD raster. You're not cr doing the SD raster. You're not working at 2997. You're working at the, you know, your, your proper frame rate. And you, could sit and you could save huge amounts of dry space, and it looks fantastic. I mean, we're the only ones with a true offline HD Kodak. Um, and so, uh, so I recommend going with like a medium for, a, for DNX36. To my test, I thought the mediums looked great. A uh, medium uh, reference file as opposed to a high, but high, you know, it's fine. It takes a little longer to import, but that's fine. Uh, and then, of course, if you can go to full and then do a batch import and you could finish, you know, at, at DNX HD, you know, at uh, 220 or uncompressed HD if you wanted to, and, uh, and that could be your online, your finish. So that you could do that in the Avid, or excuse me, in, in QuickTime Player, QuickTime Pro. Uh, the, other way, the other method is to actually just take those reference files and batch import, just it literally batch import them into the Avid. That actually saves, because this is a one-step process. This, this method, in essence, is a two-step process. You export out the, the reference files, you save as, add it with QuickTime Pro or some other application, you save as an Avid DNX HD uh, QuickTime, and then you import those into the Avid. You batch import those into the Avid. So it's kind of like a two-step process. This is in essence like a one-step process where you save those, those reference files and then you just batch import them into the Avid. It actually is much, it's a quicker process. Still, the import process is about six, time, six times real time. So we're, we don't have access to the, uh, to the, you know, the, the, re the red Kodak yet. There's a, you know, but, so we're stuck in this transcode process, but we track all the metadata. So let's talk about MetaCheater. This is a fantastic piece of software. Uh, by Jabez, and so it's really it was originally designed as a VFX piece of software. It's a, it's a, um, and and so it takes the QuickTime file, and this works with any QuickTime file. So if you have a QuickTime file with time code that you want that time code into the Avid, this piece of software does a great job of it. It could be any piece, of, anything that you have, uh, and it'll take it'll create an ALE file. Um, it's great. It's free, which is nice. It's available for OS 10 and Windows, right? It, it it'll map all the information. So if you're looking at the, uh, the MetaCheater mapping, right, AO1 maps the tape, CO1 camera, right, shoot date. So it maps all that information to an Avid log exchange file. So here's Red Alert. And the workflow would be you have Red Alert, and you would go 
file, open R3D, and I open a file, and this is a great little documentary I'm working on. It's the side of a building in Manhattan documentary. And, uh, and so, it's, uh, so there's my one file. I can make some color adjustments. And uh, again, you don't want me doing a, a, a simulate demo. I have options here. I'm going to go medium quick times. And there's a reference file. Done. Right? Open. So you have to, you have to process each file like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use MetaCheater. And I'm going to select those QuickTime files. Select the QuickTime files. Here they are. And I, imp I open the files in. All my metadata information is going to be mapped to an Avid Log Exchange file. So you can see I got my tape number, my frames, all this information is here, file name. And we have the, the options here. Now, this was designed as a, uh, a VFX, so it defaults to some VFX settings. I'm going, to def I'm going to change it to uh, so DPX. You know, we always say we'll never go back to film, but why not start tracking it right now? So I'm going to add the DPX information. So you see, if I hit process, this will change. So the first, as, as you export out um, DPX files, they come, they start at a zero zero, and so we'll track that. Even if you never use it, why not? Right? I mean, it only makes sense to have it here. And so I'll save the list. And there we go. And so here's my, here's my, uh, my Avid Log Exchange, and I just drop it in. There are my three clips. All the metadata is, right, is here. Everything that we had on there is all here. And now I'm going to batch import them. And so unfortunately, you guys can't see the clip, really, but clip, batch import, and then I'll select my clips. Set file location. There we go. Set file location. And in the last one. And so you'd have to do this for all your files. And I click import. And you'll see it's a, uh, DNX HD is a multiprocessor Kodak. So we're pinning the processors. The faster your, um, your computer is, the faster this process is going to happen. It's transcoding. It's transcoding, exactly. It's exactly what we're doing right now. We're turning into Avid DNX HD 36 as right now on a MacBook Pro. It's like a, the first Core 2 Duo 